All right, let's keep going on here. So, you know, we're talking furniture, so why not? Upholstery samples. I have several books that I have purchased. Wallpaper samples would be super fun for this, too. So, um, because this couch um, is kind of one piece, I'm going to go on the back side of this and trace it out and then cut it out. Um, <clears throat> and then what we will do is glue it to the back side so you can still see the lines um, of the couch to get the definition because if it was not this would just look like a shape. Um, Wow, these scissors are not great for this. Um, I can't see my lines for that one. And I have got so many cool upholstery samples here. Um, I actually would like to do a whole entire set <clears throat> with that backing behind it. Let's see here. I didn't see my lines very well. There we go. Okay. Yeah, see, that just is a random shape. It doesn't really look like anything, but when you place that on top, voila, you have a couch. Um, so, gluing, that's... <laughs> I don't know if a glue stick will hold it entirely, but I'm concerned that the matte medium will affect the surface of the, um, the couch. So let's start with a glue stick. We'll see how it looks. I'm trying to see what side I want to glue down. I mean, glue stick will kind of hold fabric, but this is pretty textured, so not sure. One thing that we are going to do to this, though, um, we'll definitely attach this. It just may flop around on the outside. So I'm going to really kind of get in there and embellish that glue into that upholstery with my bone folder. And I might actually go ahead and stick this under a little bit of weight just to make sure that glue adheres all over. So what we're going to do to this piece, and I'm sorry for this glare on these pieces, we are going to punch some holes and we're going to put this on the back side and we're going to put some brads through it to kind of look like, and I know these are much, much larger than you would normally see, but you know what, I don't really care. Um, you know how you see the furniture uh, where it pulls the um, cushions in? So I just thought this would be kind of fun with this. So that's my intent so it definitely will be attached together here but let me stick this under some weights and then we'll work on the next one okay so this one let me get my punch I'm going to try to punch it. I have these in the shop. Um, and I like them because they're super powerful. <coughs> but sometimes, unless I'm using this wrong, it is kind of hard to see in here where the punch is going to come out. I have a regular just hole punch like this that's a little bit easier to see. Um, but we're going to try this first. So my thought is, now I could go ahead and embellish this any way I wanted to, but I'm not going to for the purpose of this. So I want to come in here, and where these 
holes are from the light. We're going to punch because then we're going to put, um, actually, I think we might put eyelets in here instead. So I need to get some eyelets. I'll be right back. All right, we're going to see if this works or not. Um, if this doesn't work with this punch, I have my crop dial sitting next to me. Um, that will absolutely punch, but this one I felt like I could have a little more control. Um, and I actually don't know if this hole will be big enough for these eyelets. I think these eyelets are a quarter of an inch, so I might have to use my crop a dial anyway. All right, so let me punch my holes, and I'm going right where that circle part is. Okay, then let's set this so I can do my eyelet. And I know you cannot see this on the camera. And I am so bad at setting eyelets, like so, so bad. This didn't really set down too far. They may move because they're not, because this is so thin. Um, they aren't super flush. But it's still giving me the look that I want. I might have to put a dab of glue behind just so these don't move out, but here we go. And that's what it looks like on the back side. So another way. Let's set that aside. All right. Um, now let's do this one, I think. Um, so my idea for this one, and I'm thinking here, I might actually paint this with gesso first because I think I might go over it with paint afterwards. Um, but I am going to weave in this section right here to make it look like the uh, back of a rattan type chair. Um, but I want to paint it too. So let me, um, let me go ahead and coat this with some acrylic or clear gesso, sorry, and I'll be back once it's dry. All right, while our other piece is drying, um, so I'm going to use fabric on this one. So similar to the upholstery fabric, this is just regular fabric, and um, but we are going to stitch on it with some buttons, some really small buttons. Um, I'm just placing that on. I have a, isn't that really pretty? It looks like upholstery fabric, to be honest. It's just a little scrap that I had. Make sure that blue stick is really down. And I am, once this is dry, I'm going to go in and just trim up these edges a bit. Um, because they're a little bit loose. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm also going to use my rub-ons, and I'm kind of obsessed with the rub-ons on these things. And for this little piece that's right here, I'm going to put that there. And then we are going to stitch buttons like that. I'll be right back. Okay, this has been sitting for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, so I think we're in good shape. So I want to try to line these up as centered as I can here. So this area is a little over four and a half inches wide. 
So if it's four and a half, I come in from four and a half. Um, if I come in, let's see if we do one here. So that's one inch and then one in the center. And I changed my mind here. I got these really big eyelets, but I think um, I'm not gonna set it as an eyelet. I'm gonna push it through and see if it works. Um, if not, I might have to find my eyelet setter. I think I have one that's big enough for these, but, and then one like right here in the center, I think. So this is here, this is here, that is there. Um, do I want it up there or down a little bit? Maybe down a little bit. So let me move that there, that there, that there. Why does that not look centered? That looks centered. So I'm just going to mark the center of these with my paint marker because I'm going to use my crocodile, which hopefully will go through all of this. Oh, and then I have, I have to get a different one of those. I have some shallower ones. All right. Um, I am going to opt for the eighth of an inch hole um, first and see if that works. That way it's not such a, well, no, I do have to have a wider hole. So I have to have a wider punch. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, all right, I need to think about how I want to do this. And maybe get out a different tool um, for what I want to do. Let's just see if this works. So I might have to glue that down so it doesn't come off but that looks kind of cool on there right um all right let me figure out how i want to do this and if i want a bigger hole that i need to push that down into so i'll have to find a bigger punch so i'll be right back all right i did find a bigger punch i had a bigger punch but it wouldn't go through the upholstery fabric so what I ended up doing with my crocodile was just kind of go around in a circle since I had that marked here um, where there's holes were and you know just kind of make sure that I have a spot big enough for the eyelet to go in um, I suppose I probably because I have an eyelet setter I could probably set those eyelets in there as well. I have an eyelet setter that goes with that. Um, so the idea is, on all of these, I'm going to have to mess with them and clean that hole out a little bit more. But I'm going to put those there, and then I'm going to take this brad in the center of it, and that's going to look like that. And that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Put that in an art journal page. Actually, what would be really amazing is to make a journal out of all of these, like maybe connect them here or put it in your journal this way and connect it this way. Um, these would be super fun journal pages. So let me, um, I'm going to set these eyelets off camera, get everything in there. I might put just a dab of glue just to hold it all together uh, and then we'll be back. All right, let's work on our chair. Um, so I have some thread, um, actually make sure my needle go through here, it does not. Um, let's see if this one works. I have some wax linen thread, um, I thought that would be best on these. And a sharp needle. So I think I'll put the first one here, and it might be easier if you have the ability to uh, mark the holes and pre-punch them. Might make it a little bit easier. 
instead of trying to hold everything, but I'm going to wing it. Let's see, probably making more work for myself, but... Um, it is what it is, and I'll probably go through each one. Why is that twisted there? A couple of times just to make sure it's on there, but it's just that simple. Let's go up this other side again. I have some of these little buttons with four holes. Um, maybe I ought to opt for the ones with two. might be easier. So I have this one next to it. Try to find the smallest ones that I could find. Smallest buttons, that is. Also, too, if you're having a hard time holding the button in place, maybe put a little bit of dab of glue, let it dry completely, um, and then go back. That way you're not holding the button at the same time, and go back and then stitch. Um, might make it easier. Especially like if you were doing this on that really big couch piece, like that would be really cool to have buttons all the way across. Um, I would definitely take the time and maybe pre punch your holes. and adhere your buttons down. Almost done, third button. Ones with two holes are definitely easier than the four. But look how cool that looks already. And they're not completely spaced out evenly, but yeah, oh well. Kind of how I feel. My hands are not going to be happy with me. Holding these little pieces like this wreaks havoc on my arthritis. Almost done here. When you come back up these ones twice, that second go round is tough. Okay, let me just tie my knot off in the back. So clearly the back side of this doesn't look pretty, so you know, when you glue it down. So in your journal, glue it with Fabri-Tac. You could glue it with, you know, any of your wet adhesives. Um, oh, that knot did not go. Um, if you really want to make sure it's not moving, like if you put it on a cover of a book or something, you could even try E6000 on these things. Um, you know, just to make sure that stuff doesn't move. That knot's ugly. Didn't take it the first time. But there's that. So then I was originally going to place this along the side. And I still think that looks kind of cool, right, for my chair. But then I also thought to make this, you know, since it's kind of dimensional, to glue this piece of really ratted, seriously, this has just been sitting on my desk, of denim scrap on the edge and I think I'm kind of digging the denim scrap to be honest with you. Maybe I put this on first so you can see peaks of it underneath of it. Uh, let's do that. So I already cut it to charge. get my Fabri-Tac glue out. I 
And I could go in and clean the lines up so you can see what that looks like that way. But let's put this denim piece on there. Wow, my fabric talk is seriously clogged. I'm gonna just round off this top part so it aligns a little bit more with this chair. I think I might leave that piece hanging. I don't know. I'll just leave that like it is and let that dry and then we'll decide if I want to trim up that piece, but it kind of is, it's kind of key wool. Alright, so I wanted to show this too. So this is the piece that we stenciled on. Um, when the paint was dry, I used my same gouache paint on the back side, the side that I was painting on, and put it over top of it. And look at the layered effect. So when I flip it over, look at that cool background effect. So that's how you could, you could stencil on here and then paint over the whole thing with, an, with you know, a watercolor or a gouache. I like gouache because it's more opaque. And look at this just really cool effect that you get on this couch. So I'm debating. I don't know what to do with these parts in here. And part of me was like, I think it needs to be pink, orange, maybe, maybe orange, since I'm going to have this whole orange-pink thing going on. Um, let's see. Could go super bright, bright pink, maybe red, actually. I do red. If I just went in here. Color those in. Red. I really love how these markers work on uh, the couch and I think this just needs to be done red just type of red piece down there and this little red piece here and maybe just some little highlights of red there 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 And I think that one is finished. Okay, 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 okay. Let's work on this piece. Um, so this is the one that I put gesso on. And um, I am going to weave it first, paint it later. You could do either or. Um, so I'm going to weave on the side that I'm not painting on, so the non-gessoed side. So you can see here, I just, and I didn't measure them, but I just put some dots. So I am going to punch those out. And again, um, I think that maybe I'm just not using this properly here. 
because I'm having a hard time. It could also be um, that I don't have my glasses on, so I'm going to use this one. I can see a lot easier. So I am going to, if you don't have a punch, no worries. You could come in here with an awl as well, and I probably should have glasses on um, so I can see. A second, let me go grab my glasses. All right, and all would have been actually better because my holes are not straight. They're all over the place. It just, it's really hard to see what I'm doing. Um, so if you have an all, it might be better. So I have just got, I'm gonna do um, two different colors of em embroidery floss. And I think this eye has some gunk in it from my wax linen thread. So this is not going to be a fancy weaving. I just kind of want a, a weave look. Like I'm not doing a big old weaving with different yarns and fibers. I mean, if you have a bigger piece... Um, you might be able to do that, like that big long couch. Might be able to do a little bit more with it. So I am going to use this dark one for my, um, vertical. So I'm just going down one hole and going up. So this is not going to be a tight weaving either. I could have maybe poked more holes in, but then I run the risk that they actually connect because I don't have a lot of space here. And you know what? This may not work. It may work. I don't know. Don't really know. We'll, we'll see. All right. So that's my first row so I can see my ups and downs right so let me tie this off in the back sorry the dogs are in the background causing a ruckus and that this is really messy in the back like really really messy my knot is not good and these scissors just suck I think because I probably have cut things that I shouldn't have with them. And then for my weaving part, I'm going to use this lighter colored thread. And I might have to get my Redder out because this is a really small eye and it's not liking this thread. Oh, I got it. All right. So now I am going to come up the horizontal holes actually I'm going to start with this bottom one here that I use for the vertical and since there is no thread there I am just going to pretend like I'm weaving All right, so, and this is, I am just making this up, and because I'm off lines here, um, it's not lining up at all, so I skipped a row, but I'm just weaving it like I normally would. Let me come back up, because I was going to end up in the front side. And go over, under, over, under, over, under. 
So basically you always want to come up from the back side and then go down. So you might have to, uh, depending on the number of holes, make do with that. This isn't completely the look I was going for. And to be honest with you, I think if I were to do this again, what I might do is back this so it's not transparent with like just collage paper. So then you can't see all the threads underneath. And then it might be a, a cooler effect. I could have also maybe done this with a thicker, maybe more of a yarn, not a thread, and that would have filled that in a little bit more. Um, so I've got to decide kind of how I want to handle this. Um, maybe I'll go in with yet another one and maybe do the opposite so I was coming up. Um, so I'm capturing this. I know this is not making any sense. This isn't supposed to be a weaving tutorial. I'm just kind of winging it. but. Um, let me play with this a little bit off camera and I'll come back with kind of the finished project and to be honest with you if I don't like it I can always take all of this out and and start over but let me play with this a little bit all right I think I'm gonna show one more technique and then let everything dry, kind of finalize everything, and then come back and share them all. I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen. Fourteen. So I lied. I thought I had fifteen. Maybe fifteen. I don't know. We'll have to see how many pieces I have here. Because um, I know some of them I doubled up a little bit. Um. So we're going to do some gold foil. So I thought this lamp would look kind of cool with some gold foil. So I have a paintbrush and I'm just going to apply a um, little bit of matte medium. And I'm trying to stay inside the lines. And a really thin layer just needs to be sticky. Sticky, sticky, sticky. And get some of my gold foil here. Gold foil is so nice, but it's such a pain to use. Like, no joke, a pain. This is a much bigger piece than I need, but it's what came out. All right, so I'm just gonna burnish that down. Okay, that didn't work because my matte medium already dried. Mm-hmm. That's not good. Let's try this again. This time I'm going to wait till that dries and then we will burnish it off. Alright, I am so excited to show you. So let's look at all of the finished pieces. Some of them have um, multiple of the techniques. Let me zoom in here. Um, and I think actually some of my favorites are painting with the, or covering it with clear gesso and then going over it with my gouache. I just love that look a lot. That and 
um, the rub-ons like that is kind of a cool look to me so here's a little chair um, I will have to tell you I literally just it's ugly on the back so ugly on the back but I just kept weaving 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 in and out just to fill that space up so you couldn't see anything and I think it looks pretty it looks pretty good now that uh, it's done and just um, painted the chair in two different colors just to make it look like it was really old and worn but I love that I can't wait to put that in one of my journals um, here is that light that we put the eyelets in and I think that looks cool because it looks like bulbs and you know if you really wanted to get super super fancy if you covered the back um, you know if, depending how putsy I love little things like this like I could spend all day making little projects like this but uh, putting a piece of um, maybe punch out a circle of the acetate here and glue it to the back and then fill that up with glossy accents and it would kind of and maybe something that looks more opaque like a light bulb um, where it's it's whitish in color maybe put a little bit of paint in with it and it would look like light bulbs in there so I might have to do that with that because I didn't think about that until now but that's this light post so we have two here um, this was the first one we started with still always one of my favorite techniques it's super fast and I love it and just that looks so cool on that table I went ahead and painted the legs with some of my gold gesso because you can never go wrong with gold so there's three and I'll zoom back out I have them all kind of placed here but I'll zoom back out when we're done so that's three this is four it just kept it simple and all I did was paint um, I painted so here's the side I painted but again when you flip them over all the lines and everything are perfect so just painted it with my acrylic paint markers and it's cool because then on the you know whatever's on my my page like if I wanted to layer that behind it or whatever background I have on my art journal page it will show up so there's that one here is another light so this is the one that we put tissue paper behind and I didn't like the edge so I put a little bit of glitter and kind of the same thing I added a little bit of the gold gesso for the legs just so it stood out a little more and I think that looks super super fun um, so my glitter one I'm not a fan of this one um, I don't know if it's the glitter I used it got I think this this blue glitter was just too chunky I didn't like the gold that I put on the outside I kind of actually like it better on the back side of it where the glitter is not it's a little more flat um, it definitely is a funky looking chair I'm sure I'll end up going in a journal page somewhere but the glitter looks kind of cool with this um, because you can see it there but there's that chair then so here's my rub-on chair I love these rub-ons they're like and it didn't design them this way but they're definitely go hand in hand with this furniture like that looks like furniture I just used the two different uh, ones for that and I actually did it on the legs too with my rust so we use primarily this rub on that's now all been used up and then I used my rust uh, paper rub on as well for the legs on that one and then um, when everything was on really good I just went over it with my my black pen that I doodle with and I think because the rub on was on here it actually and I did really loose marks on it to make it kind of messy but it it worked um, then this one too I really like this idea of the so this is the one we stamped on and then we put clear gesso on top and I painted in between the stamp marks and then I put the little rub-ons where the little arm things were and I think that turned out really cute so we've got that one let's see here so some of the alcohol ink ones um, I went ahead and did an, a few more because I really like the alcohol ink ones because they are translucent and they're super fast so this is one of the chairs it's not kind of defined as a chair because it it kind of got lost with this so I might go back in with some more acrylic paint markers but I think right now it's really psychedelic looking and when you have that down on a on a page it looks nice 
Um, these were the first two we did, and I won't do anything to those because I just I like the coloration of these little jars. So I don't think they need any more. And then this one, I did put a couple of colors of alcohol ink and then went over top of some of the parts with some of the paint marker. Um, I kind of want like a stained glass look, but that's where the acrylic paint marker kind of lost it with that. So maybe if I took the acrylic inks and painted them on instead of dripping them on and I had a little more control, I could probably do that with these on the top part to make it look more like a stained glass um, lamp top. But anyway, those will get used. So this is a piece that we, this is the back side that we put the pan pastels on. Um, and then I put a couple of layers of Spectrafix on the, so it's not coming off at all. It actually really held nice. But when you flip it over, then you get that really kind of modeled, it looks like an old couch. And then I did go over the pillows with the uh, Posca markers just to make them pull off. And I think that looked, that looks pretty nice. That turned out really good. Okay, let's see what we have here. So here is the table that I put the rust on and I kept trying to do something with it. I was trying to put some of the gold acrylic paint, didn't like it, but when I flipped it over, I don't know if you can see, it looks like a rusted table because you get the different color variations and I kind of like the little hints of gold here. I like that side much better than that side. So don't worry if you're doing this, maybe the other side looks better. So. I will definitely use that table that way. Um, so here's the little fabric chair that we did the buttons, and I'm just going to leave that hang because I think it's kind of cute. I really like the textual feel of that one. And I just painted the legs with some black acrylic paint pen, and there's that chair. Um, so I wasn't over with the glitter. So this chair that's in the set, it has these little black dots. Um, so it looks like this, it looks like this. So all I did, and my glue spread out a little too much because I was rushing, but um, I just put a dop of glossy accents and put my glitter there, and I don't think it really needs much because again, if you put it over a piece of paper, like how cool does that look? It really pops off of it. So I'm just gonna leave that chair like it is for now. Um, okay, so the gold leaf. This was another fail and again I wasn't quite sure if these would work or not. So what I did, I couldn't get the matte medium to really stick to the acetate. So I ended up taking my glue stick and put the glue down, I think because it was tackier, and then put the uh, gold foil on it. So that's what's on this side right here. And I ended up going all the way up to make it look like just an old gold uh, hanging light. Then once that was down, I did take a very thin layer of matte medium on the back just to make sure that wasn't going to move anywhere. So then when you flip it over, you still get the shape of the lamp here, but it looks like one of those really old, almost like uh, antiqued gold lamps. So I think it actually turned out pretty good when it's all said and done. So here is our upholstered couch. Um, I did have to, so you can see the back side, I did have to go in and make sure I had a lot more glue in here because these holes were way too big for those brads. So I kind of have to think about this process a little more, but I loved it because it looks like a legit couch because of the upholstery fabric. And I think that will be super fun if I, you know, collage, these are just body parts, but um, I don't think I have anything cut out here cut out one of my shapes and have her lounging on the couch or something like that would just look really cool in an art journal. Then the other couch, this is the one that we stenciled on. And then I went, after the paint was dry, I went over it with just some of the gouache and it filled in the areas that were clear. And I love that. And then I just went in these kind of ripped up parts in the top with my acrylic paint pen and that couch turned out I think really nice. And this one I think is one of my favorite pieces. So this is the chair that I took all my different washies and put it here and then I used the other washi here. 
I left this clear just because I didn't think, I think it would be too much. And I love that contrast between these two. Cause again, depending on what you have this on, on your page, I mean, look how cool that looks. And I, this one I think turned out really good cause it looks exactly how I thought it would look. So I really like this chair. And then the last piece um, was the crackle. So this failed the first time. The crackle was too thick. It actually came completely off. So I took all of it off. I put another layer of gesso on here just to see if maybe it needed another thick layer. And then I used a different crackle. This one is a deco art crackle. I don't even know if they make it anymore. Um, after the crackle, and it was a smaller crackle, it didn't come off. But I wanted the crack marks to show up like an old grungy uh, light light. I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but there is some subtle cracks in there with the black paint. And I kind of like just how grungy that looks. The other thing that I might do, um, I was playing around with some of my washi tape um, with some leftover paint on my table. And I think I might actually just put that on top too. I don't know. I haven't decided. It, it's not a big deal. It's just something I can glue in there if I really want to. Um, I might wait to see what page I put it on, but it would look like that, um, which is kind of neat because it looks just really old. But it, it kind of worked, kind of didn't. I did paint the back with white just to make this brighter, to maybe make that black part show out more, but I love how kind of frosted that looks. Um, so that's that light. So when it was all said and done, we did one, help me zoom back out. These are all of the pieces. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All right, I'll count. Um, I lost count, just a second. Let me get them all on the screen here. I'm gonna count all the uh, um, alcohol inks together. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I'll count this with the glitter. So, seventeen different ways to use just clear furniture pieces to make them kind of your own for your art journal pages. Like, how about that? Looks kind of cool. So now I have a bunch of them made. So the journal that I'm currently working in, I'm putting just random furniture in it just because. So now I have a bunch of things ready for that journal that I can just pull from. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you get these and you make some, and if you have some new ideas, please share them. I, I'm always looking for new ideas. Like, this, you know, within a 24-hour period, these are things that I kind of put together, um, and I, I'm kind of obsessed with them, even more so than I was when I designed them. So I hope you enjoyed it. See you later. Bye-bye.